Hello, good afternoon everyone and welcome to my presentation. This presentation is about human perceptual threshold for motion stimuli. I think it is particularly relevant to those of you who apply motion effects to audiovisual content for an immersive application, such as 4D cinema and 4D rise. Let me start by saying a few words about us. My name is Yuan Li and the co-authors are Jejun Park and Seungmin Choi. I am a PhD student under the supervision of Professor Choi. We are in the Interaction Lab at Postec in Korea. This work was supported by Samsung Science and Technology Foundation. The presentation is structured in three main parts. Background knowledge, absolute threshold, and differential threshold. We first introduce some background knowledge related to our study. The starting point for our research was the growing demand for motion effects in immersive for the applications. Motion effects is employed for viewers more immersive and realistic experiences, and it serves as vestibular feedback that somewhat coincides with the motion in a visual scene. When 4D effect designers create motion effects, they combine six degrees of freedom of a motion platform. Each degree of freedom corresponds to a rotation or translation around one of the three axes in the three-dimensional space. For simplicity, here we call a motion that moves only in a single degree of freedom, a motion type. Designers in general use their artistic flair to create motion effects in a manual manner. To create proper motion effects while using different types of motion, they have no choice but to consider the perceptual performance of humans. Human ability to perceive motion effects can be quantified as two kinds of thresholds, absolute and difference. Absolute threshold means the smallest amount of stimulation needed for a person to detect. And differential threshold means the smallest amount of difference between two stimuli that can be detected. When we summarize the measurements scattered across studies, please see these two tables, there are some blanks. To make matters worse, these studies have experimented with different experimental setups, such as motion platforms or human body positions. To provide a comprehensive basis for human vestibular perception, we measured both absolute and differential threshold for all six types of motion in the same setup. Based on our experiences, we hypothesized that the sensitivity of rotation and translation for the z-axis, I mean the vertical axis, would be lower than that of motion for the other axis. That is, yaw and heave the rightmost chair motion in the figure would have higher values of both kinds of thresholds compared to the uh, row and surge and pitch and sway. We performed two psychophysical experiments to measure these kinds of thresholds. In both experiments, we used the same motion platform shown in this slide and restricted the participants from receiving sensory information other than the best real information. This video shows the six types of motion in the order of x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis with our motion platform. To measure absolute thresholds of motion, as in Benson's paper, we used a single cycle of sinusoidal acceleration. We then found an appropriate intensity range for each motion type by simple pilot test, and used the ranges in the experiment. Using the motion stimuli, we experimented according to the method of constant stimuli. It allows us to obtain the entire psychometric function per motion type, and thereby we are able to derive the motion intensity of any perceptual probability. 
Please note that most studies reported only one point of a psychometric function as a threshold, making it difficult to compare them with other measurements or generalize. In this study, we define the absolute threshold as the stimulus intensity with a detection probability of 0.5. The probability value for a threshold is just a conventional choice. Five males and two females participated in the experiment with an average age of 24. As a result, we obtained the six psychometric functions. We colored the function red for x-axis motion, green for y-axis motion, and black for z-axis motion. When we ran the repeated measures ANOVA with the absolute threshold, the effect of motion type on the three rotational thresholds was significant and also for the translational thresholds. And both rotation and translation show that the curve about the z-axis were more shifted to the right and stretched out than the others. To measure differential threshold of motion, we used two cycles of sinusoidal acceleration as a motion stimulus. In particular, as in other relevant studies, we also appended another half cycle of sinusoidal acceleration before and after each stimulus. It was to prevent the motion platform from rattling due to the waveform starting and ending at non-zero velocity values. We set the intensity ranges of the reference motion stimuli to take full advantage of the hardware performance of the motion platform. We experimented according to the adaptive staircase method following a two up one down rule. In this case, we are able to one stimulus intensity which corresponds to a probability of 0.3 and the function. The method we employ here allowed us to obtain the weather fraction per motion type while efficiently measuring the differential threshold for multiple reference intensities. Seven males and three females participated in the experiment with an average age of 26. As a result, we obtained a total of 18 measurements and the six Weber fractions by regression. As with the absolute threshold results, we color the regression line red for x-axis motion, green for y-axis motion, and black for z-axis motion. According to the repeated measures ANOVA, the motion type was a significant factor on the rotational threshold as for the translation, the differential thresholds were affected by the motion type with marginal significance. Moreover, between the threshold and reference intensities, we found a strong linear relationship for rho, yo, and surge, a relatively weak linear relationship for the last motion types. Overall, including previously measured results, we were able to find one common pattern that motion of the vertical axis shows the highest threshold. We hope that our results will be useful for generating motion effects for 4D content while considering the human sensitivity to motion feedback.